Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure. Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Why am I late again? Yes. Well, I've been helping my Uncle Tom Zizimas in his butcher shop in Baltimore. He's having a sale on lamb chops for $4 a pound. Wait a minute. He sells lamb chops for $4 a pound? Mm. What does he pay for them wholesale? About six cents a piece. <laughs> then what makes the lamb chops so high? It's them little paper panties. The garment workers union don't, pay, don't work for nothing, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's talk says. But why, why, why are you limping? Well, when I was coming to the studio tonight, a big dog in the parking lot bit me on the leg. Costello, the dog, that dog might have rabies. Oh, gee, I hope he does. He'll name one after me. I... <laughs> you dummy. Oh, I call it Easter rabies. Ah, stop, you dummy. Was there, was there ever anybody in your family that wasn't an idiot, Lou? Oh, sure, my great-grandfather. When George Washington crossed the Delaware, my great-grandfather, Valley Forge Costello, was the first man to jump out of the boat. He was? Yes, but Washington made him get back in the boat and go across anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was the sexy! Well, never mind that. What makes you look so tired? Didn't, didn't you get any sleep? Oh, I snored so loud, loud last night, I kept waking myself up. Well, if you snored so loud, why, why didn't you do something about it? I did. I moved to another room. <laughs> Then I dreamed about Marilyn all night long. Uh, by the way, how are, you, uh, how are you getting along with Marilyn? We're hitting it off pretty good. You are? Yep. I keep putting my head on her shoulder and she keeps hitting it off. <laughs> Costello. All right. <laughs> Costello, why don't you go back with the rest of the baboons? Okay, any message? Get them out of here. <laughs> Ah, oh, yes, the boys are on the beam tonight. And they'll be back on it in just about one minute. But first, let's hear this. The best things in life may be free. The moon, the sun, a rare day in June, the right summer. But one best thing in life costs quite a few greenbacks. It's a home of your own. And that's exactly what seven couples have an opportunity to win this evening when they go for the house. Go for the house is the wonderful show on which contestants can win a beautiful new honeymoon house of their own. Each Thursday night, M.C. John Reed King calls seven couples up to the ABC microphone. Each couple selects a room of Honeymoon House to furnish, and as they answer each of seven questions correctly, a different prize goes into the house. After the third question, they can take their prizes or go for the house. If they answer their seventh question, they win the Honeymoon House. For a show filled with 30 minutes of excitement and suspense, don't miss Go for the House this evening over most of these same ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Hey, Abbott! All right, all right, all right. Well, wait a minute. Why are you doing that rubber doll? Uh, what are you doing with that rubber doll? It's a present for my sister's baby, Tony. He's one year old today. Uh, has the baby learned to walk yet? Ah, but the kid is only one year old. He only learned how to drive the car last week. What? <laughs> what's, what's the baby's name? It's my sister's fifth baby, and she named it Ming Toy Lotus Blossom. Ming Toy Lotus Blossom? Mm. Why did she name the child that? She read in a big book that every fifth child born is a Chinese. I... <laughs> That, Lou. Uh, what is your sister's husband doing now? Huh, what's he doing now? He yeah. had a little filling station. And what a filling station. But they picketed him and closed him up. Now he's hoping they skunk farm. A skunk farm? 
Mm-hmm. A skunk bomb. He figures that's one business the union won't stick their nose in. <laughs> I haven't seen your brother-in-law in a long time. How, how is he, Lou? Ah, uh, you wouldn't know him, Abbott. The no. sands of time have changed his face. Well, he's only a young guy. How could the sands of time change his face, Costello? My sister belted him in a puss with an hourglass. <laughs> <laughs> Where are your sister and husband he living now? He now has granulated eyelids. Yeah. <laughs> Lou, <laughs> where are your sister and husband living now? I'll let you know in a second here. <laughs> in the middle of the page. A minute. <laughs> They're living in Pasadena, and boy, is that a ritzy town. Oh, no, 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 it's not so ritzy. Yeah, but Pasadena's so high class that they stop all the tourists at the city limit and make them rent mink coats before they can drive through town. No, I don't believe it. I know, I know. Ah, stop, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Huh? I don't believe it. You don't believe it? No, I don't. My brother Pat used to drive a truck for the city of Pasadena. He told me that all the garbage he picked up was gift wrap. Oh. <laughs> You mean your brother Pat drives a garbage truck? Oh, he's just doing it until he gets his new invention on the market. His invention will change the whole toothbrush industry. What is it? A tooth on a stick to clean brushes. <laughs> Costello, let's face it. Your brother is nothing but a bum. I beg your pardon? I said your brother is nothing but a bum. Abbott, that's why I can't sleep at night. <laughs> Thinking what a bum my brother Pat is. Well, if you can't sleep, why didn't you count sheep? I did. Once I counted the 10,000 sheep. I was just ready to fall asleep when along came a black sheep, and I got to thinking what a bum my brother Pat is, and I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. <laughs> Costello, with all the thousands of people that have no place to live and are looking for vacancies, how can you walk around with a big empty head like that? <laughs> Show me in the script where it says anything like that. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I can tell a joke. I'm a pretty good showman. Yeah? Yeah. You tell a joke like P.T. Barnum. P.T. Barnum is dead. You keep telling those kind of jokes, you'll join them. I... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that, Lou. My wife always laughs at my jokes. Did you ever notice those little uh, crow's feet around her eyes? Those are from laughing at my jokes. If those are crow's feet around your wife's eyes, uh -huh. the crows that made him must have been wearing baseball shoes. I... <laughs> How can you say that? My wife, Betty, has a beautiful face. She's got an automobile face. Well, what's an automobile face? As soon as she gets the jack, she ought to have it lifted. I... <laughs> my... my wife is okay. And you'd better be off if you found a nice home. Well, you'd be much better off, Lou, if you found a nice home uh, with a loving girl and got Do married Do you yourself. know where you're at? No. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but my wife is okay. You'd be better off if you found a nice home, loving girl. I'm and lost myself to... now. <laughs> I found it. All right, right, I found mine. <laughs> Have you got your place? Have you got yours? Oh, yes. Let's go. Let's go from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is okay. You'd be better off if you found a nice, home-loving girl and got married yourself. Well, we gave you enough time to rehearse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, <laughs> I had a home-loving girl and I had to get rid of her. Why? When I wasn't around, she was home-loving some other guy. <laughs> well, you should go out more and meet some nice girls. I'm Louis. going out tonight. There's going to be 26 girls at this party. I'm going to kiss every one of them. Now, that's the trouble with you. You have no manners. Now, when there are 26 girls at a party and you take, you talk about kissing, every one of them, remember, one dozen. One dozen? No. Well, tell me which one it is and I'll cross her off my list. <laughs> you get it? No, I didn't get it. <laughs> they are lost where we were before. <laughs> Costello, you should be satisfied with one girl. Don't you know one girl that you like better than the rest? Oh, but I saw one a day that I could really go for. Well, why don't you propose to her? Proposed to her? Yeah. How dare you say that to me? Well, your father proposed to your mother. Yes, she was my mother, but this girl is a total stranger. I... <laughs> well, why didn't you start courting her? I did. I, did. I sent her some uh, orchards. Not orchards. <laughs> <laughs> it says here, orchards. No, 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 not orchards. Orchids. Kids, orchards. kids, kids. 
Oh, sure. Probably after we're married. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you don't mean... You don't, you don't get the girl with orchids. You get her with orchids. Kids, kids, kids. Just a minute. Where am I getting all these kids? I ain't even married yet. <laughs> you talk sense. I'm talking about orchids. Orchids are raised in a nursery. Your kids might have been raised in a nursery, but our kids are going to be raised at home. No, no. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm talking about orchids. We have orchids at home. They're potted. They take after you, don't they? <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Costello, do you mind if I make an announcement? This is Abbott's nephew, folks, and any statement that he makes does not necessarily reflect the views of a human being. No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Norman, make your announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, starting next Monday, I will be available to the public as a babysitter. You can I always tell you. an Abbott, can't you? <laughs> huh? Again, please? I say, ladies and gentlemen, starting next Monday, I will be available to the public as a babysitter. I thank you. Just a minute, Norman. How can you be a babysitter? The only job you ever had was tying up bundles in a department store. How could you be a babysitter? It's the same thing, wrapping and unwrapping, wrapping and unwrapping. Hey, that... <laughs> well, hello, boys. Hello. Well, hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Viola Vaughn. Viola Vaughn, Lou. Boy, I'm glad you showed up early, Viola. Tonight I'm going to sing a song just for you. Why, Costello, I didn't know you sang. Oh, I got a high voice. I can hit a high U above T. High U. Fine, thanks. High U. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, Viola. <laughs> Pay no attention to him. Uh, why don't you and I have a bite of supper after the show, huh? Well, I... Well, just a minute, Viola. I hired you. Don't you think you should go out with me, kid? Please, Mr. Costello. I'll decide who I want to go out with. Well, that suits me. Make your own choice. I won't try to help you in any shape or form. <laughs> <laughs> with your shape, with your shape and form, nothing will help you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awfully clever, Abbott. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Viola Abbott is practicing up for television. Well, why would Mr. Abbott want to be on television? It's the only way he can get in every bar in town at once. I... <laughs> well, Abbott I, uh, And I, I think we both struck out Now you tell one uh, <laughs> Well, I'll have a try at it Did you boys know that my uncle is in the hospital? Uh, no, Viola Tell us what happened Well, my uncle was watching two men Hoisting a piano into the fifth floor window of a hotel <laughs> He was no, wait a minute, I didn't hear you, Viola. Wait a minute, take that again. Well, I said my uncle was watching two men hoisting a piano into the fifth floor window of a hotel. He was standing underneath them yelling, heave ho, heave ho. But wait a minute now, how, how did he get into the hospital? They thought he said, leave go. <laughs> Let's give this kid six silver dollars and a box of Snickers. <laughs> oh, Lou, you're not mad at me just because I told a little joke. Well, I... Oh, come here and let me put my arms around you. Yeah. There. <laughs> Just rest your head on my shoulder. <laughs> and I'll hold you close now. <laughs> uh, would you mind if I ran my fingers through your hair? Viola, I wouldn't care if you walked through it in your bare feet. <laughs> When you hold me like this, I get an aching feeling in my chest. Is it love? You're pressing against my elk's tooth. <laughs> and as the plot thickens, we'll ring down the curtain of the nonsense just long enough to bring you this message. How much do you think crime cost the citizens of the United States last year? According to figures gathered from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the answer is more than $100 million. This alarming fact is one of many revealed to listeners of This Is Your FBI, broadcast over most of these ABC stations each Friday night. The purpose of bringing facts like this to the attention of Americans is to spotlight dramatically how crime affects each of us and to explain how the individual can guard himself against methods used by lawbreakers. Further, the program, which is the only network show produced with the full cooperation of the FBI, presents an authentic action-filled drama which drives home an important lesson. Yes, for exciting drama, plus hence helpful to the protection of your family, be sure to listen to the official This Is Your FBI tomorrow night when it's on the air over most of these ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. And now 
now the spotlight turns to Hal Winters, our singing star. Here he is with Matty Malick and his orchestra. Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That the ache in my heart is for you Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That from now on I'll always be true I went away But I didn't mean to stay And I will regret it Until my dying day Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That the ache in my heart is for you Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That the ache in my heart is for you Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That from now on I'll always be true I went away But I didn't mean to stay And I will regret it Until my dying day Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That the ache in my heart is for you But I didn't mean to stay And I will regret it Until my dying day Brush those tears from your eyes And try to realize That the ache in my heart is for you All right, Costello, come out here. What's that you have in your hand? It's a picture of my grandfather, General Stonewall Costello. What a hero, Abbott. He fought in the Spanish-American War. Every time he went off to battle, all the girls in Patterson would line up to kiss him goodbye. Wait a minute. Every time he went to battle, all the girls in Patterson kissed him goodbye? Yes. The war ended in 1898. But they couldn't get Grandpa to stop fighting until 1935. <laughs> he must have been some fighter. Yes, he taught me to fight. I became quite a boxer. I remember my first fight. In the third round, my manager threw the towel in and I won. Well, wait a minute. How could you win if your manager threw in the towel? He threw it over my opponent's eye. <laughs> you dummy, you're no fighter. You're not an athlete. There's not an athlete in your whole family. Oh, yes, there is. My brother Pat is a famous athlete. Just last week, he pitched a no-hit game. Oh, well, lots of guys have pitched no-hit games. In football? It... <laughs> Costello, you and your brother Pat are the dopiest guys in the world. Yes, there ain't nobody a dopier than him and me. Well, now, that's incorrect. You should say, there's nobody dopier than he and I. Okay, there's nobody a dopier than him and you. Right. <laughs> well, never mind that. How's Pat getting along with his uh, new girl? Oh, well, for a while, he had it pretty tough. Every time Pat went over to see her, her brother would throw him out of the house. Last week, her brother went away to college and things are different. What do you mean? Now her father throws him out of the house. <laughs> Pat working? Oh, yes. He's got a job with a milk company, and he works like a horse. What does he do? He pulls one of the wagons. He... Hello. What do you want, Norman? Are you going to do another one of them Sam Shovel misery programs tonight? <laughs> look, Norman. Look at the script. That's mystery. I listen to the show, brother. It's misery. <laughs> Abbott, if you don't keep that nephew out of here, I'm going to flatten him. I'll hit him in the head so hard that his shoes will have three tongues. I'll lay off. <laughs> Well, enough of this nonsense, Costello. What is your Sam Shovel uh, detective story about tonight? It's one of my greatest cases, Abbott. I call it the case of the Russian diplomat who took the 6 p.m. boat back to Russia or red sails in the sunset. <laughs> well, it sounds interesting. <clears throat> Let's get on with the case. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. The detective business has been lousy lately. 
I ain't got a nickel to my name. I guess it's just as well. How would it sound if people called me Sam Shovel Nickel? <laughs> Last night, somebody ransacked my office. They went over it with a fine tooth comb. I know they went over it with a fine tooth comb because this morning when I came in, the horsehair sofa had a part in it. <laughs> I'm so mad I can see red. Hi, Sam. Hi, Red. <laughs> In the office across the court, I see the beautiful stenographer combing her hair. She just combed out her bangs. <laughs> I'm a little thirsty. I think I'll have some orange juice. I squeeze my orange juice the hard way. The hard way. I place the orange in my mouth, stick my head in the doorway, and slowly close the door. <laughs> On my way to the office, I found a woman's handbag. I wonder what's in it. I decide to empty the contents on my desk. That takes care of the change purse. I wonder what's in the bag. I look at my appointment book. I see that tonight I have a date with a gorgeous peach. I think I'll break it and make a date with a girl. I glance down at my desk. There's one of my old business cards. Sam Shovel, FBI. Fat, busy, ignoramus. <laughs> the printer made a mistake. I haven't been busy in years. I look out the window. In the garage across the street, the mechanic is working on a car. On your mark. Get set. Go. No matter what car comes in, he always races the motor. Coming up the street, I see my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad. What a cop. Whenever the police department makes a raid, Lieutenant Abbott is a spearhead. Not that he's so brave, but he's the only cop in the department with a head like a spear. <laughs> Abbott is a quiet cop. Every Sunday, he sits home and listens to the radio. He's trying to win the jackpot on Stop the Music. He's trying to win it the hard way. The hard way. He has no telephone. <laughs> It's, it's a chilly day, and I've got a fire going in the kitchenette of my little office. There's a kettle boiling on the stove. Hello, Sam Shovel. What's that smell coming from your kitchenette? It's my washing. I thought it smelled too good to be your cooking. <laughs> uh, I'm mighty tired, Sam. So are your jokes. Uh, <laughs> I'm really tired. I just been out on a wild goose chase. What were you chasing? A wild goose. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott used to be a comedian. He tried to make a living. <laughs> he tried to make a living with his monkey shines. He had to give it up. There's no money in shining monkeys. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, I've got bad news for you. Your cook was picked up this morning for passing a bad check. Whose check was it? Yours. <laughs> That's not funny, Sam Shovel. You weren't a friend of mine, I'd punch you in the nose. I knew Lieutenant Abbott was only bluffing. He couldn't punch his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> don't worry him. After all, how often do you get stuck in a paper bag? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Cut the small town talk, Sam. Lefty Lumphead is in town and he's gunning for you. I know that, Lieutenant. I've already notified the police. They've thrown a net over the city. I'll call headquarters and see how they're making out. Hello, Chief. Yes? This is Sam Shovel. Have you got that net out for Lefty Lumphead? Yes. How's the net working? Did you catch Lefty yet? No, the net's working fine. Already we've caught three butterflies. <laughs> Sam, this is serious. No matter what you give Abbott's nephew, nothing happened but Sam. <laughs> Sam, this is really serious. Lefty Lumphead is a killer. He's out to get you. He may be on his way here now. And I know you're afraid of him. Me? Afraid of Lefty Lumphead? Tish, tush. I'd like to see the day I'd be afraid of him. Hello, Sam. This is the day. <laughs> Before me stood the toughest killer on the coast. When he was eight years old, he shot his father and mother. Then he asked the judge for mercy on the grounds that he was an orphan. <laughs> What a tough mug. He's got cauliflower ears. 
Never was a fighter, it's just that his ears was made out of cauliflower. I noticed Lieutenant Abbott's hand reached for his holster. Abbott's gun barked. <laughs> okay, coppers, I got you covered. Sam Shovel, I got one bullet in this gun. It's for you. I'm gonna give you a break, Sam. I'll put that bullet wherever you say. If it's all the same to you, put it in Lieutenant Abbott. <laughs> You're pretty clever, Lefty Lumphead. You're one of the smartest burglars in the business. But there's something I want to ask you. Huh? How is it you, you've never been caught robbing a house? Uh, it's easy. It's easy. I only rob houses on Thursday nights. Why did you pick Thursday nights? Because Abbott and Costello are on the air Thursday nights. And, brother, when they're on the air, nobody stays home. <laughs> Lefty, that's a lie. Abbott and Costello are on right now. I'll prove it's a lie by checking with the police department. Hello, police department. Can you tell me... We ain't got time to talk to you now. Why? Every house in town is being robbed. <laughs> I had taken all I could stand from that killer. Quick as a flash, I pulled my gun. <laughs> Sam, Lefty is seriously wounded. Your bullet went through his shoulder. Call the hospital. What have you done? What have you done? Sam Shovel, you shot my boyfriend. Lefty's girl, the most gorgeous mall in the underworld. She's beautiful. Look, he's bleeding. Call the hospital. He's the only boyfriend I've got, and he's liable to die. Call the hospital. If he dies, who's going to love me and squeeze me and kiss me? Call the morgue. <laughs> Keep the house lights down, boys. We'll have a curtain call from Abbott and Costello after a final reminder on this subject. One day, a little man who was quite a big guy in the underworld decided to turn over the proverbial new leaf. He thought to himself, this life outside the law won't get me anything but a nice long jail sentence. So this tiny pelt character took the bull by the horns. From Safecracker par excellence, he turned sleuth par excellence. Know his name? Sure, it's little Herman. That captivating character who entertains you with exciting adventure every Saturday night over most of these same ABC stations. Little Herman's never regretted his step, for it was one in the right direction, the direction of law and order. As for excitement, there is nothing lacking in the life of Little Herman. Because he knows the underworld, he's of invaluable help to the law. As Little Herman says, it takes a crook to catch a crook. So don't miss Little Herman on the air Saturday night over most ABC stations. And now back for a final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Well, Costello, you sure worked hard tonight. Yep, but you know my motto, hard work never hurt anybody. That's what I keep telling the people that do my work. Well, you should thank... You should thank the people that do your work. I'm going to do that right now, Abbott. That's First, what? I want to thank our writing staff, headed by Eddie Foreman, with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello. Wait a minute. And our band leader, Matty Malnick. You're right. And let's not forget our producer, Charles Vander. See you next Thursday night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody in Patterson. Good night. Good night. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. 8 o'clock at KECA, AM and FM, Los Angeles.